It's time now for the Kill the Can podcast. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Kill the Can podcast. It is Tuesday morning. I'm on the way to work, and I realized that in my last episode, I said the same thing. I said it was Tuesday morning. It was actually Wednesday morning, <laughs> and I said that the eclipse was the week before, and the eclipse was actually two days before on Monday morning. Um, I, nobody, nobody pointed that out. Um, I'm sure it didn't bother anybody else, but as I listened back to the podcast, it really irritated me, so I wanted to take the opportunity at the beginning of this episode to point out my mistake and correct the record, so to speak. So, wanted to talk today about a topic that is unfortunately very near and dear to my heart, but it's also very, uh, very topical, very timely, because I was just having a conversation about this just yesterday on some of the Kill the Can social media platforms, and that is weight gain after you quit dipping. This is a very real phenomenon. I, I can't speak to the, like, why this happens medically. And first of all, it doesn't happen to everybody. There are some people that when they quit, they will actually lose weight. Um, I will say that the, those people are in the very large minority of quitters. If anything is going to happen to your weight when you quit dipping, it is overwhelmingly from my experience and from the experience that I've seen over these 18 years being a member of Kill the Can, it is that you gain weight. So the question becomes, why does it happen? What can you do about it? How much weight are we talking? Those kind of things. I don't remember exactly what I weighed when I quit dipping. I can tell you now I weigh considerably more than when I quit dipping 18 years ago. And I'm taking steps to reverse that trend. I think it's probably fair to say that I can attribute a good 20 pounds or so for me early in my quit that I would attribute to kind of directly to my quit. Now, does that mean that I kept everything else in my life the same? I just quit dipping and I gained all this weight? No, absolutely not. I think what happens and I can tell you what happened with me, and I can almost guarantee you this is what happens with most people. When you quit one addiction or you quit using one thing, in this case, dip and nicotine, you replace it with something else. For me, it was food and alcohol. Snacking a lot more, munching on a lot more things, um, eating snacks when... I normally, you know, previously I would be dipping and then drinking more than I did before I quit. The combination of increased calorie intake from food, increased calorie intake from alcohol, whether in my case it was beer and bourbon and those kind of things, and not to mention the fact that nicotine can act as an appetite suppressant. So you take away this thing that was artificially decreasing your appetite in nicotine, and then you add into the fact that you're going through withdrawals, you're feeling jittery, you want to keep your mouth busy, you want to keep do something to keep your mind off your quit... And you can see how very easily and very quickly you can start to add on some pounds. Again, I don't, I don't think it is purely just removing the nicotine from your system 
that is causing this weight gain. I think it's a combination of all of these things. So what can you do about it? Um, obviously, you know, if you want to lose weight, there is, um, I think we all know kind of, we all understand what we need to do to lose weight. It's exercise, it's eat right, it's these kind of things. One thing when it comes to exercise, exercise will help you considerably early on in your quit. Not only will it help you to minimize any weight gain that you're potentially dealing with, it is wonderful to help you deal with the stress and the anxiety that you are putting your body through by taking nicotine away from it. I always tell people early in their quit, drink a ton of water, get your that nicotine flushed out of your body, and go for a run, go for a walk, go get a workout in, play a sport, these kind of things. You, It is amazing how getting your body, get a good sweat going, get some of that anxiety and that rage, take it out on the heavy bag, take it out on the weights, take it out in the pool, in the gym, you know, what have you. It's amazing. I mean, exercise is always good, especially as we get older, but it's amazing how good it can be for a quitter dealing with withdrawals, dealing with anxiety, and potentially dealing with with weight gain as well. The um, What I will say is that weight gain typically team, uh, um, tends to be relatively short-term for most, most people. And what I mean by that is the effects of their initial quit um, tend to wear off. A lot of people then, once they get a few days or a few months or a few hundred days under their belt, they can then use the tools that they have learned in their nicotine quit, the concepts of one day at a time, the concepts of small changes over time adding up to pretty massive changes to then turn around and apply that to the, the weight that they may have gained and they tend to lose that weight oh, you know, because they're no longer dealing with the immediate withdrawals, they're no longer dealing with the nicotine, you know, their, their body is used to not having that appetite suppressant of nicotine in their system. And most people are able to regulate that and lose that additional weight. Unfortunately, myself, I said at the beginning of the podcast here, I'm, I'm not one of those people, or I haven't been one of those people. Um, I, I have kind of made a joke for the last several years that I've been working on my quit weight for quite some time now. And, you know, I'm, I'm coming up on 18 years and the fact that I'm having to deal with this quit weight now is really troublesome for me. And I mean, the re- let's be honest, the reality is this is not quit weight 18 years later. This is just me who has not not taken this seriously or not tackled this the way that I know that I need to tackle it. And again, I'm not going to talk about my weight on this podcast, but um, I, I just thought it was it was interesting because it was it is something that has been weighing on me personally. And then just yesterday, I had some conversations around weight gain with with new quitters, and I thought it was would be an interesting topic to talk about. Um, I hope that everybody's quit is treating them well. This is one of those. I, oh, one other thing. Now, now that I think about it, the weather has broken and and spring is here. Seasonal change can bring massive triggers to a new quitter. And what I mean by seasonal change, I think I've talked about this on the podcast before. I probably talked about it in the fall, but spring can be very traumatic for a new quitter as well. If you are a new quitter, and this is your first spring as a quitter, you will be shocked 
how the sights, the sounds, the smells, the activities of spring will may, may give you massive triggers. They may give you massive craves. And I think what this is, is your brain is so used to doing these things that you associate with spring while having a dip, that now that you have removed that nicotine from your body, from your system, your brain is going, hey, well, what's going on? It's springtime. We normally do all these things with a dip in. Where's my dip? And bam, you're going to get hit with a crave. And this can happen not just for a brand new quitter. This can happen, you know, three months, six months, nine months, almost a year. To, you know, if you quit last spring and you were just going through the initial withdrawals, now this is your first spring as a true quitter. You might be almost a year in and going, oh my God, what's going on? I felt great for the last six months and now bam, out of nowhere, I'm getting these craves. I'm telling you, seasonal triggers are a very real thing. Could be spring cleanup, the first time you cut the grass, you know, these kind of things. So just keep that in mind that the as the seasons change, the triggers can come calling in a very real way. So just be on the lookout for that. And if you get a massive crave, go back to what got you quit. Go back to basics. Drink water. Get on the site. Talk to your brothers and sisters. Share your experiences because I can guarantee you that if you're going through something dealing with a seasonal springtime crave, I can almost guarantee you that there's somebody else in the community that is dealing with the exact same thing. And when we talk about sharing, it's you never know when your experience is going to be the one that helps that next quitter down the line get over that hurdle that they're dealing with. And who knows, maybe they're scared to talk about it, maybe they don't understand what's going on, maybe they think they're unique. Share those experiences because I can guarantee you you are not unique. You're dealing with something that we all deal with when we're quitting our addiction to nicotine. It is an honor to be quit with you. I will talk to you soon, quitters. Have a wonderful day. Join us again next time for another edition of the Kill the Can podcast.